How's it going guys? I'm finally bringing you my coin making tutorial for NHL 18. I know this one took a while, but hopefully I cover everything. First off, you go down to the bottom tile there, you can see there's an earn hut reward uh, tile. Click on that, you'll watch an ad. It'll bring you to the hut screen. I think you get 200 coins for it. So not a lot, but if you are starved for coins, obviously it is 200 free coins. Also right there, you guys can see the hut daily rewards. This has been improved this year. You now get 1500 for every single day straight you log in after the first seven days. Plus day one gives you 300, where last year it gave you 25. So a uh, big boost on the day one. Obviously, you definitely want to try and sign in every day um, as you're going to get a lot more coins for it. Uh, for instance, if you sign in every single day of the year, you'll actually get over 500,000 coins, which is absolutely amazing. Compared to, let's say, if you signed in every other day, you'll actually get around 55,000 coins. Even if you sign in every single other day and you're actually playing like half as much as somebody else, you're only getting about 10% as many coins. So definitely do your best to sign in every day. It is well worth it in the long run. Next, I just want to cover the solo challenges. Obviously, this is a new feature to Hockey Ultimate Team. Uh, there's both limited time solo challenges and solo challenges that are available all year. There's actually some very good limited time ones that are easy to complete like this one right here. Difficulty, rookie, score five goals, and you'll actually get 1,700 coins for doing it, which is a lot more than a regular game, and you're only playing two minute period, so you're gonna finish it much quicker. Same with this one here, semi-pro. Uh, you'll get uh, 1,200 coins plus a consumable pack. Consumable pack, you can usually quick sell for around 700 coins, so that's almost 2K for a game against a semi-pro. All right, here's actually a cool new one, the Team League Challenge. You can see you can actually get a bronze collectible from beating this one. It's on All-Star, but if you do do it, obviously it's worth it. Collectibles are worth a lot this year. Uh, I got a silver collectible there, a Team League collectible. So again, it's really worth it to just kind of look around with what's going on in Hut, as there's actually a lot of opportunity to make coins. Uh, that's like an easy way there to get collectibles, whether you use them or sell them. Obviously, you want to take advantage of that. Now, for the actual uh, regular solo challenges, I think the NHL team ones are some of the best. You get a gold pack there for being the Red Wings, gold plus for being the Flyers. Uh, when you beat, I think, the Islanders, or sorry, the Maple Leafs, you get a mini collector's pack. So that's a rare player's pack with bronze, silver, and gold players, but you still have a very really good chance to get something good. Oilers there, you get a rare player's pack, so that's 10 gold rare players. And then the final one there, the Capitals, is a rare player plus pack, where you actually get 20 rare gold players, so I think it's definitely worth doing. Synergy challenges, I think these are the second best ones in my opinion. Every single synergy challenge gives you 1,500 coins for just getting two or three stars, and if you get the third star, you actually get a random player with that specific synergy. So I mean, you really only have to get two stars and you get 1,500 coins, which again, is more than you get from a hot game and it's half the time. Plus, all the challenges are only on pro, so they're pretty easy to do. And the next bit here, guys, has to do with being on cheap gold rare players. So if you guys didn't know, uh, gold rare players quick sell for 500 coins. So basically, what we're going to be doing here is bidding on gold rare players for 500 coins. So worst case scenario, you're not able to sell the player after you get it. You quick sell for 500 and you break even. So having like a break even point as your worst case scenario is actually pretty amazing for making coins. Usually, you're taking on some risk when you're buying a card in hopes of selling it for more. You never know if the market's going to drop, um, if something else could happen, like a better version that card comes out. You never know. So the fact that the worst case scenario here is breaking even is pretty amazing, especially too, if you're working only with a little bit of coins, you really don't want to risk a lot of coins when you don't have that many to spare. So I think this is an awesome method uh, for somebody that doesn't have very many coins. I would say under 20k, you buy a bunch of these guys for 500, you list them up for between seven and 800. Uh, usually like a few of them will sell, especially if they're more like rare or just kind of sought after players. So for instance, in our collection here, Cam Talibut, you know, uh, apparently he's a pretty good goalie, plays for the Oilers. There's gonna be some people that want him compared to say Trocek, we might have trouble selling him. But again, worst case, we break even. Uh, the Chaffield here, I have the Team of the Week card, 600. I think I actually did end up selling him. So easy, like 300 coin profit. Uh, it's a really easy way, I think, to make coins without much risk. So obviously awesome for you guys. Uh, they're just starting out. And the next method here, guys, is a classic. It is the bronze pack method. You've been able to do this pretty much since bronze packs existed. Basically, you buy a bronze pack, sell everything within it, and you're usually going to profit. So right now, you can see bronze players usually sell for around 300 coins um, pretty easily. Like, that's the cheapest ones on the market. A bronze rare player pack there has six players, or sorry, a bronze plus pack has six players in it. So you sell each of those for 300. That's 1,800 coins. The pack only costs 2,500. So basically, after selling the players, you need 700 coins more to um, break even, and it's so easy to do, like between the jerseys, the logos, and the quick sell, uh, you're pretty much going to break even at the minimum every single time, especially too, if you actually get a decent player, you can sell for a bit more, that's going to help you out. Also, head coaches sell for more, or quick sell for more, I should say, so that just helps out again. Jake Dean, for instance, there, I can probably sell for like 500, so that's an extra couple hundred coins to help me make my profit. We also got like the London Knights logo, I think that sells for around 500, so that's not even included in like the 1800 coins from the players, so right there is 2300 coins you can see i listed for a thousand but i do getting 500 the winter hawks jersey there 
I'm an idiot, I listed it for 500, as you guys will see, it's worth quite a bit more than that. But we get like 400 from the quick sell there, you can see the Winterhawks logo, our jersey, sorry, was actually worth in the thousands. Um, I sold it for 500, obviously, because that's such a good deal. All the players sold too, so very easy to make your coins back. Uh, like I was saying too, with the coaches, you can quick sell them for 200, so if you get one of those, you only need like 500 more coins to make your profit back. If you get luckier with a player like I did here, pulling Nico Hishia, that's awesome. When I pulled him, he was actually going for like 10k. I listed him up, no one was buying though, by the time I actually sold him it was like 5k, but still, that's two packs from one player, not to mention all the other players in this pack I sold, the jerseys, the logos again, there's just so much good stuff you can get a bronze pack, it is very, very easy to make your coins back, um, you just have to be willing to like list all the cards up, and then make sure you just quick sell all the junk, you don't want to waste your time trying to sell it, you kind of have to have an eye too to know like what looks like a good jersey, what doesn't. Next pack here you can see I get Nolan Patrick again, just kind of showing you guys how good these bronze packs are, you can also get bronze collectibles which are worth like 4 or 5k I think, so again twice as much as a pack. Like, you just really can't go wrong buying them. Uh, you can also try your luck with these silver packs. Now, I prefer bronze packs. I think silver packs are more of a high-risk, high-reward. Obviously, they cost more coins, a little over double the price. But you're going to have a better chance of making more coins. Um, silver players, they sell for about 500 coins instantly. So, you get 8 of these actually in a pack. You need an extra 2 players. So, that's 4k, which means you need about 2k from the rest of the pack. Quick sell for 500, need about 1500. You could see that one. I held onto a logo in a jersey. So if I can sell that logo in jersey for 1500, we're breaking even. And you can see there the silver logos and jerseys actually do sell for quite a bit. So um, silver packs, like I said, I think a bit more risky than bronze packs, but if you have the coins, I definitely recommend it. You can even see there, Calgary Hitman jersey sold for 5k. Uh, there's a lot of like jerseys and logos that are ridiculously expensive. So if you get lucky and pull one, you're set. The next method here, guys, is pretty simple. It basically has to do with focusing in on one player. Doesn't matter who that player is. You want it to be somebody that's somewhat popular, though. So I chose Zach Rowenski, and for like the last month, pretty much, I've been buying and selling Rowenski. You can see I sold a bunch there for 4k. Basically, what I would do is go on the market. Whenever there was one that was like 500 coins or cheaper, so basically 3,500 coins or less, I'd buy it, relist for 4k, and I'd do that for all the ones on the market. So I kind of like controlled the Rowenski market, and as there was more on the market, I'd somehow just have to like lower it, so I would start listing for 3,500, slowly coming down with the market, but overall, always making sure I'm making a profit, and it's a really good strategy to do if you have the coins, and you know there's a certain player that's high demand. The next method here, guys, is another classic method. It is the 59th minute, so if you guys don't know how to do this, basically, you're going to go to the market, go gold rare, Put in your buy now max for basically whatever you can afford, and then you're gonna click RB as many times as it takes till you get to the 59th minute. So you can see I'm skipping here, and we're basically gonna be at that auction spot looking for deals. People are listing their cards for an hour, way under market value. Now, to do this, you need to know the market prices of the cards. If you don't know the market prices of the cards, it's very tough to do. You could get lucky. Uh, for instance, I just took a look at a Forsberg that's up for 750. 85 overall, Forsberg's a good card, pretty popular player. I figured that's probably a little cheap on Forsberg, so I basically took a risk there, even though I knew he had to be worth more than that. Uh, he actually ended up being worth around 1,800 coins, so not too bad, especially since my market's knowledge isn't the greatest, like it could be better. All right, there you can see me just checking the market and seeing what he's actually worth. But like I said, to do the 59th minute, you really need to know the market. It was actually one up for 1,400 coins there. What I like to do, I didn't do it here, as I was just kind of looking at all of them, but if I know that there's a player that's also under market value, I'll buy that player, and I'll then sell both of them. So instead of saying selling my Forsberg for 1,400 coins, matching the cheapest one, I instead sell mine for 1,800 coins, so an extra 400, and then I buy that one for 1,400 and sell it for 1,800 as well. So instead of selling one for 1,400, I'm selling two for 1,800, um, making profit on both of them, you know, just extra profit. I actually did it here with Team of the Week Dry Sell. I pulled one in a pack. He was going for around 20k coins when I checked the market. I seen there was one up for 14k. So rather than leave that one up for 14k, I buy it and list it up for 20k as well. So I take out the cheapest one. Now mine are the two cheapest. I make 20k on mine and then make an extra 6k profit on the other one. It's just a very easy way to maximize your profit and make sure that the people are buying your cards when they go to check the market. And if you guys need help with the market as you're unsure of player prices, I highly recommend Brian Storm's Google Doc. I believe he updates it daily, like you can see there, October 11th, last time this was updated. Now the prices are for Xbox, but still it should give you a pretty good idea for PS4, and he has the prices for pretty much all the players that you actually be using and selling. So, Rare's there, 2 to 5k, he's got Carter, Dry Saddle, Eichel, Johansson, he's got 5 to 20k's, 20 to 50k's, 50k plus, so if you see a player like in that 50k plus column, anything for under 50k when you're at the 59th minute, obviously you want to scoot them up immediately, 
try and flip them. He's also got all the legend prices there, uh, the Evo prices. Obviously, the Evo cards are very expensive, and they're always kind of trending up. He's also got the prices for, like, Silver Goalies with the really good synergies and the Bronze Goalies with... Uh, both silky smooth and thread the needle he also has the price to do heroes based on the collectible cost so for instance the first hero item is alma guinness as you can see there it's actually the cheapest one uh based on collectibles which really is the only thing that matters the players are very cheap uh, the most expensive ones i think are like danico and Boyle. so uh really cool he's also got collectible prices there uh, you can see like the bronze prices silver gold so if you happen to be looking through collectibles and you find some cheap you definitely want to take advantage of that but Obviously, this is a great tool to use. He doesn't have the prices for like all the special cards, like Teen Weeks and stuff like that. So you guys have to actually use some of your own knowledge and maybe even just some of your own intuition to kind of figure out if a player is undervalued or not. But this list alone should make the 59th minute method much, much easier for you to do. And next, you guys want to touch on the Evo cards that I mentioned earlier. So pretty much unlike any other card in the game, the Evo cards are the only ones that are actually going to go up in price during the year. All the other cards should be going down in price. So as you can see here, Evo Matthews right now is worth around 350k. Um, I actually bought him for 220k when he was still in packs. Definitely buy them on a Wednesday after they've been out for an entire week. That's when there's the most on the market and people are willing to sell them really cheap. Rowenski, for instance, he's worth like 90k right now. I bought a couple for 65k when he was on the market, so I could easily sell them for 90k right now. I have two of them, so or sorry, three of them. Uh, 25k profit each. The Matthews, I'm looking at like over 100k profit on. And like Matthews has gotten one upgrade. Wrensky hasn't even gotten an upgrade yet, so by the time they've gotten like three or four upgrades, it's going to be a ton of profit. I highly recommend investing in Evos while they're in packs, when they're their cheapest, and then selling at a later date, definitely though before team of the year. The next method here guys has to do with buying collectibles, more importantly though, your knowledge of HUD and just kind of how cards work in game. So the first week the Team Week set was there, a lot of people thought that the Team Week collectibles for week one could only be used for that first team of the week, which was like the Vegas team of the week, a really bad team of the week. And because of that, a lot of people were selling their collectibles undervalued. As you can see, I'm buying a ton here under 5k. As it turns out though, uh, we found out from the EA guys on Twitter, you could actually use these collectibles in the next week's team of the week set, uh, which had to make David in it, which made their price soar. Now there's like an OV and a cane in the team of the week. So anyone who bought those team of the week collectibles for really cheap when the Vegas team of the week was out, before people knew you could use the collectibles in any week, made a ton of coins. You can see I bought a ton there for like, 4k or whatever they're now worth 14k so if i hadn't used mine and evidently wasted mine as i got nothing i could have made like 10k profit on each one which would have been like 400k because i had 40 but uh missed the ball there i'm sure though there'll be other opportunities in the future where people don't know what a card does they're selling it too cheap and as it turns out it's actually worth a lot more because people didn't know what it could do and speaking of team of the week guys right here you can see me making some easy coins on a team of the week brock besser basically every single rare special card which means they're 83 plus Quick sells for 2,500 coins or more. I just bought a Besser here for 1,700 coins. Quick sells for 2,500. So I'm not even going to bother listing them on the market. I could just quick sell them now. Easy 800 coins. I don't have to waste my time. I probably could have sold them for like 3K, but just to kind of show you how easy it is, a lot of times people just don't realize what cards quick sell for, and that's an easy way to make coins. So next method here, guys, this is so much method as it is knowing what events are going on in game, as a lot of times you can actually use that to your advantage to make coins. So face off, Lano here is going for like 67K on the market. Now you can actually do the set to get him for with using uh, two face off collectibles. Buy two for like 1,500 coins that cost you 3K. You go and do the Lano. You actually get a master collectible from doing the Lano set, and then you could actually flip him on the market for like 6K. So basically, you'd be profiting 3K plus getting a free master collectible, which will definitely be used for something down the road. Last year, one master collectible was a random 90 plus. Even if that's like a random 87 plus this year, obviously that's still a great deal. 3K profit and a random 87 plus down the road. Um, obviously right here, I'm just going to show you guys me doing that set. So it's just a great way to make coins, kind of like going what's going on with the sets and everything else. And while I was in this video, guys, I realized you can actually quick sell Lano for 5K, which is kind of funny considering the fact one of my methods is like knowing the quick sell value. So that's why people were trying to sell them for 6 to 7K. But again, you can do the set for 3K, quick sell them for 5 with a free master collectible. No reason not to do it. Another way too, guys, as you can see here, uh, this is actually the day that the season one completed. Now, when the season ends, a bunch of people get a ton of rewards. So you can see like rank one to 10 there, these 92 players, the top guys, I think the top 100 guys all got players. The next 400, 101 to 500, got the biggest pack, the biggest centennial pack. 500 people there got the next centennial pack. Um, what is it? 4,000 uh, got the regular centennial pack, another 5,000 a gold plus pack. So basically a ton of packs are just flooded into the market. Everyone's ripping them open, getting a bunch of cards. They're just trying to sell everything and get immediate coins. So if you actually go on the market and start buying players the day the season ends, you'll actually be able to find a ton of steals. As like I said, so many packs are being opened up. So many people just want to get instant coins. They don't care if they're underpricing their players. So I got a Marner there for 1,500. I think I sold him for like 25. Uh, I got a Headman for 20. I got a Malkin for 70. 
And as you guys can see here in a second, um, I'll actually end up selling the Malkin for 80, so an easy 10K profit. I think I sold him literally the next day. Uh, that's how like quick his price went back up. Had him there, I sold for 25, so again, an easy 5K profit. Uh, I actually talked about this in my uh, video talking about like the new flashback sets, but you actually actually make a ton of money buying flashback collectibles. It's another thing, just knowing what's going on in the game. So buy flashback collectibles before the flashback set for the week is out. You can get them easily for 20k and under. Use the four of them. Do the player. It costs you 80k. Koibu there, I sold for 140. That's 60k profit. Uh, Gabrick right now, he was the one from last week. He's selling for 140 as well. So if I sold my Gabrick, I can make another 60k. So that means I'm not only making 60k profit on each of these players every single week. I'm also banking a flashback master collectible, which you guys missed my last video and you don't know, is actually being used for some crazy players. Uh, there's a 95 Heatly you can get with, I think, 20 uh, flashback collectibles, yes, 20, as well as a 99 Brodura that you can do for 30. So it's like, I'm already two of 20 for Heatly, plus I make 120K coins. It's like, such a sick deal. I don't know why more people aren't doing this, but I definitely recommend, you know, doing the flashback set, selling the player, and then saving up those collectibles. And finally, guys, my last piece of advice here is how the market is always dropping. So one of the worst things you can actually do is hold on to your cards. It's best to sell them immediately when you get them, as that's when the most hype for the card is. Um, that's when there's, like, not a better version of the card out yet. Um, as you hold on to the card, there'll be more packs being pulled and more of that card being pulled, which means bigger supply, more competition between people trying to sell the card. So whenever you get a card that's worth a lot, or even if you're buying and selling, you want to sell those players immediately before anyone else has a chance to kind of like undercut you. As you can see here, just throughout the last month, Wenski's dropped from 4k to 2.5k, or actually, sorry, 2k. You can see I'm selling for 2k now. I was selling for 4k. McDavid, for instance, was worth over 200k when the game first came out. He's now worth 100, sometimes even less than 100. So it definitely makes sense to just sell your players as soon as you get them, even if it's a player you really want. Like, let's say it's McDavid. I could have sold McDavid when the game first came out for over 200k and just bought him back now for 100k. So I had an extra 100k just for simply waiting. So it does not make sense to hold on to your card. I know you want to use the card on your team, but it really makes sense, especially at the beginning of the game, like in October, basically any time before Christmas. It just makes sense to just sell those cards for as much as you can before building like your final team. Uh, so that's basically it, guys, for my advice for you. Hopefully you learned something from this video. I tried to include as many different uh, coin-making tips as I could. Uh, it's pretty much all the different ways I make coins in this game. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment. If this video did help you out, please leave a thumbs up. Other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.